here we're going to look at um, the light reactions within photosynthesis. So this is the photo part of photosynthesis. So for the photo part of photosynthesis, we're going to look at light. And let's think about what light is for a second. Light is going to be wavelengths of light. And we could talk about it as photons as well. But I'm just going to talk about it as wavelengths for the purpose of this. And the wavelengths of light could be shorter or they could be longer wavelengths. And depending on the length of the wavelengths of light, um, indicate how much energy is um, in that light per unit of time. Now, when light waves hit an object, um, any of these three things could happen, or all of them. Some of that light wave, or some of those photons that are the light, will be reflected. Some of those light waves will be transmitted. And some of those light waves will be absorbed um, by the object. Now, you've experienced this. Um, when light hits something that appears white, it appears white because that object, the, the molecules in that object, reflected all that light. Objects that appear black, when light waves are hitting those objects, it appears black because those objects actually absorb all of the light and reflect nothing. So um, things appear the... Um, or, or things are going to look the color of the light that they reflect. And so if they're reflecting all the light, they appear white. So we could propose this question. Green objects reflect which color of light? And the answer is, if an object appears green, that's because it's reflecting green wavelengths of light or, or wavelengths of light that are at that um, uh, green color spectrum. And so they would be reflecting wavelengths of light here, which I kind of find ironic because this means that things that are green are actually, if you think about, you know, what they are in terms of what they are, what they are absorbing, they are absorbing every color light except green because they're reflecting green light. So I kind of, you know, existentially, I think, oh, well, things that are green are actually every color except green because they appear green because that's the one wavelength of light that they reflected. Um, but the idea then would be things that appear green are actually absorbing all of these wavelengths of light below the color green and all of them above the color green. And so they can be getting energy from all of these wavelengths of light because only this wavelength is being reflected. Okay, well things when they absorb light, often we feel that, like with black clothes, we feel that absorption of light as heat. Because what's happening when um, objects or, or things that contain molecules are absorbing light is um, they are boosting an electron within that molecule to a higher energy atomic orbital. And, and so what we're kind of referring to here is, remember there was a proton around the atom and then there were these electrons that existed in these specific orbitals. Well, what we're saying is when you when an object absorbs a light wave, this electron it actually takes this energy from the light wave and it boosts it to a higher energy orbital around the atom or, or it, within that molecule. And so when, you, when that um, electron absorbs that energy, it goes into what's called this excited state and in, into this higher energy orbital. And then, you know, if it gets to that excited state, it's unstable. So it absorbs the energy to get to that excited state, but then it's going to need to go back. You know, it's going to be drawn to go back to being its more stable state. And when it does that, it releases that energy that it absorbed, and it would release that energy as heat. And you know this because, uh, for example, on a hot day, if you were to touch a sidewalk, that sidewalk appears hot because what is happening inside that sidewalk, molecules are absorbing the energy from the sun and then releasing it as heat energy. And so um, that energy from the sun is basically being converted to heat. Now, um, when plants do this, or other things that are able to do photosynthesis, they have a specific type of molecule called chlorophyll that has electrons that get excited, so they go to this excited state. But then instead of letting all of that energy be kind of released as this entropy or kind of non-usable heat energy, um, uh, the cell is very carefully to, instead of letting this go as heat, to convert it into other molecules and basically track this so that this becomes usable. 
so unlike a sidewalk, uh, which when it absorbs molecule, you know, the um, energy from the light waves, um, it releases it as heat. Um, when a plant does that by chlorophyll in the plant, it releases that, it passes that on so that it can be kept in a usable form and not simply lost as heat energy. So within the leaves of a plant will be all of these chlorophyll molecules. And now if we think back to what we saw with the, the chloroplast, remember it has that inner and outer membrane, and then it has these thylakoid stacks in the middle. And in the previous video, we saw these thylakoid stacks and they're always colored green. And that helps me remember that these thylakoid stacks are the ones that contain chlorophyll. And so in this picture, we're kind of seeing chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is a pigment molecule. So pigments appear green. So these pigment molecules appear green. That means that they are absorbing all of this um, light energy, the light waves, or we could call them photons. They're absorbing the photons uh, from the sun. Um, they're absorbing, really, they're absorbing every light wave except for green. And as they absorb these light waves, it causes their electrons to go to this um, uh, excited state. And um, when that excited electron um, gets to that excited state, it's unstable. And it's going to drop back down to that lower energy level. And we said before, it will either release energy as heat or, um, for example, fluorescent jellyfish actually release it as light. Well, plants do not release this energy again once they get it. So once the chlorophyll molecule um, gets its electron unstable because of the light energy, it's going to capture it. The pigment molecule is going to transfer this energy from the electron to another molecule where the energy can be captured and stabilized. So we don't want it to be lost as either heat or as light. We're going to try to capture it. And so um, this energy excites the electron and then that energy gets kind of passed around uh, this complex, which is in this thylakoid membrane. And it will eventually excite an electron in what's called the reaction center. And this reaction center will then have this electron that goes into this unstable or high energy state. So now it's important to note here that in this picture, um, these little arrows, they're not showing a passing of an electron. They're showing a passing of the energy. And that energy gets passed to this reaction center where this reaction center will have an electron that gets boosted to this higher state. So we, this is where the electron is in this um, heightened state. So in this picture, we're seeing the thylakoid membrane. Look, it's even showed in green. Even though these are just normal phospholipid molecules for this bilayer, we're showing it in green to kind of help us remember that this is the thylakoid membrane. And in this thylakoid membrane are gonna be many proteins. So we're seeing in this membrane multiple types of proteins embedded along here. And they'll just be all over the thylakoid membrane, not necessarily arranged in this nice linear fashion because they're gonna be, remember that we're 3D. So some of them will be back here and some of them will be on the other side. And they're just gonna be kind of scattered all around. Um, but within the thylakoid membrane will be a couple complexes um, that we're gonna follow. One is called photosystem two, and the other is called photosystem one. And we're, like I said, we're going to be looking at these linearly um, because that's how we're going to be able to understand what's happening. And linearly, PS2 is actually going to become before uh, PS1. And that's just because this is the order in which they were discovered. So we discovered PS1 first, named it, and then discovered, oh wait, before you get to PS1, there's actually a different uh, complex here and it's gonna be called PS2, even though it comes first. It's just, it's the order in which we discovered them. And the thing about both of these photosystems is they have a light harvesting complex. So this light harvesting complex is gonna be all of these chlorophyll molecules. And the idea of these chlorophyll molecules is that they are absorbing this light energy and passing it to a reaction center. And the reaction center is going to be called um, P680 in PS2, and it's going to be called P700 in PS1. Um, but these are the 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 um, light harvesting centers within there, and they're surrounded by all of these pigment molecules. So these guys are the ones that these are the reaction centers, and so surrounding them are all the chlorophyll molecules that are absorbing the energy and passing that energy to either P six eighty or P seven hundred. Um, so 
ultimately within P680, an electron is going to become excited. It's going to get its um, uh, energy orbital boosted. And this excited electron is going to get moved down an electron transport chain. So this starts to look a little bit like what we saw in the mitochondria. This excited electron is going to get passed. And every time you pass the excited electron, um, when we pass that electron, we're going to use some of that energy to pump hydrogen. So here comes the light. The light gets absorbed by some of these chlorophyll molecules and passed to P680. P680 then has an electron gets excited and passed. It's going to get passed from P680 to these other little molecules um, abbreviated here as PP, uh, phytopitin, I think it is, and then QA and QB. So the electron gets passed along. So this we're following this electron flow. And as it gets passed, some of these molecules will actually pump hydrogen. So we're going to see hydrogen end up becoming really high inside here. So this is kind of like that proton motive force we saw in the mitochondria. But now we're actually accumulating hydrogen inside here. So this is kind of like the water behind the dam. This is a source of potential energy to concentrate all these hydrogen molecules here. And so as we're passing the electron, we are pumping hydrogen. Uh, eventually we get to PS1 where we actually we re-energize. So we, um, we have another light harvesting complex here where we can re-excite that same electron and use it to pass it again. And we're going to keep passing that electron until at the very end we're going to use that electron. Something's going to gain the electron and be reduced. And the thing that gets reduced is going to be basically NADH kind of like we saw before, except for it's actually NADPH. It's got an extra phosphorus in there. And I just kind of remember NADPH, the P is for photosynthesis. It's not. It's actually for um, a phosphate. But for me, I remember that P is, we see it always with the photosynthetic reactions and not for the cellular respiration reactions. But it's the same idea as far as um, this NADP plus gains the electrons and the energy and is reduced. And we say, well, where's the electron? Well, it's actually this little H because hydrogen has both an electron and a proton. And so it gains an electron as it gains that hydrogen. Um, and so we eventually, that electron goes um, and we reduce an, a molecule of NADPH. And so this is going to be an energy intermediate that we're going to use later. Um, and we'll see that in the next phases where we actually use it. The other thing that happens in this whole process, so we make this one energy intermediate, we can see that that'll be useful later. We also make some ATP. And how we make ATP is our main player, ATP synthase. Remember, this is what I kind of describe as a water wheel. We have concentrated, or really, I guess it's a proton wheel, because we have concentrated protons, these little H plus molecules, or I'm sorry, little H plus protons is what they are because they're an atom that has a nucleus with a proton and an electron that should be orbiting, but that electron isn't there and it's just effectively a proton. So it's H plus. And so we've accumulated all of these H plus inside here that gives us a big concentration gradient, kind of like water behind a dam. The only way hydrogen can get back to equilibrium is by passing through ATP synthase as it does kind of like water passing through a water wheel as the protons pass through ATP synthase. It turns um, the wheel of A. ATP synthase and ATP synthase takes an ADP molecule and a phosphate and smashes them into an ATP using that energy that's generated by turning the ATP synthase molecule to force these two molecules into an ATP. So in this process, the photo part of photosynthesis, what we're effectively doing is we're making these energy intermediates. We're making ATP and NADPH. So these are our energy intermediates that get made. And they get made as we're passing this electron and using some of that energy every time we pass the electron to pump hydrogen in order to get this potential energy of this hydrogen all being concentrated to one side of the membrane. Now, notably, this is inside the thylakoid membrane. So these thylakoids are these stacks um, inside there. And what we're doing is we're concentrating hydrogen ions inside here so that when they flow back out into the stroma, we're making ATP. And then the NADPH and the ATP, both of these are being made out here in what's called 
um, the, the stroma, the space outside of the thylakoid. And we'll see that that's where they're going to be used because we'll, in the next video, we'll look at the Calvin cycle, which is going to use these in order to synthesize glucose. And that's going to happen out in the stroma. Okay, so this is a good peek at the overall process of what's happening. Just to keep it very simple, what's happening is we're absorbing this energy, um, using it to excite an electron, and then passing that electron. As we pass that electron, we're passing energy. Um, and so as we're passing it, we're going to use some of that energy to actually pump hydrogen that creates this huge store of potential energy that's later used to drive ATP synthase to make ATP. As the H plus goes through that little wheel, it spins the wheel and that wheel is the energy that's able to smash an ADP and a phosphate together into an ATP. Also, as we're doing this, as we pass this electron, we're going to be reducing eventually, as that electron eventually goes to NAD+, NAD+, gains an electron and is reduced, so that makes our energy intermediate NADPH, and both of these we'll use in the Calvin cycle. Okay, so that's our big picture overview. We need to take a step back and, and, and try to rectify a couple of things here. Because, uh, for example, one of the problems is if we're saying that we're passing this electron, well, aren't we going to run out of electrons over here? So we need to somehow make sure that we're not getting rid of the electrons. Um, so let's look at what's actually happening with this excited electron. Okay, so PS2 and PS1, these two big um, complexes, they have what's called a light harvesting complex and a reaction center. The light harvesting complex are all of these chlorophyll molecules. And, and the chlorophyll molecules are the ones that are absorbing the light energy and boosting their electron. So they're originally, their electron is getting boosted. So they're going, ooh, their electron's going to this higher energy state. Uh, but it doesn't stay there. It releases this energy. And, and normally, like when sidewalks do this, it releases it as heat. But it, this, in this case, we're not going to release it as heat. We're going to actually transfer this energy in a process called resonance energy transfer. And we're actually going to, all around the complex, all of these chlorophyll molecules are doing this. Their electrons are getting excited. And they're going to all um, pass this energy to the reaction center. And in the reaction center of PS2 is P680. So P680 is called the reaction center. And P680 is the one that's going to have its electron ultimately um, be most stable being at this heightened state. Um, uh, and so its electron gets to this heightened state. And what happens is, um, actually the electron's not most stable, it's actually most destabilized. I, I, I kind of said the exact wrong thing. This electron is destabilized. And so this electron kind of pops off and goes and gets passed. Now this is a problem because P680, when it loses that electron, there goes its electron, bloop, it's gonna go away. It's gonna be passed down the electron transport chain. And we're left with what's called P680 plus. You know, the, so this whole little molecular complex has now lost an electron, so it's got a slight positive charge. So we need to replace this, in, this electron. How do we replace this electron? Well, um, P680 is going to steal an electron from a water molecule. And it's just a normal, boring, low energy electron. It's just gonna grab it off a water molecule. Let's look at how that happens. Um, so here is the same thing. This is PS2, this is that photosystem. Here's all of its chlorophylls all around. They're going, ah, I'm excited, I'm excited, I'm excited. They're, they're doing this resonance energy transfer. So they're, these guys, they're not passing electrons. They're passing the energy. And they keep passing the energy until it gets to P680. And P680, its electron, is the one that stays boosted. It goes, oh my gosh, I'm in a boosted electron atomic orbital. I am unstable. And it's the one, P680 is the one that's going to lose that electron. So, bloop, there goes its electron. It actually gets passed to the first electron acceptor, um, which is called the primary electron acceptor. Um, we can follow it over here. It's going to be pheophyton is its name. It's abbreviated PP. That's going to be our first um, electron acceptor. Um, so pheophyton grabs the electron and it passes it on to some plastoquinones, QA and QB. They start passing it down this electron transport chain. 
But let's jump back because there goes the electron. So P680 lost its electron and became P680+. plus. We're trying to figure out how P680 plus uh, is, is going to keep doing this whole process of the photoreactions if it's already lost its an electron, right? Because if it loses its electron, it's kind of like, well, game over. I don't have an electron anymore. I can't play anymore. So P680 needs to replace that electron so that it can continue to do this photo process of photosynthesis. So how does P680 get an electron back? It says here, a low energy electron from water. So here comes water. Water is going to be, it's going to lose its electrons and become oxidized. So water loses an electron. Here you go, P680. Look, you have an electron again. Oh, look, you're back to normal. And then P680 can do it again and pop off another electron. But so water gives P680 back an electron. And when water does this, water loses its electron and is oxidized. Water becomes oxygen. And so um, if we look at very carefully what happens, technically we kind of need to double the number of water molecules in order to form the right amount of oxygen. Otherwise, we're gonna, you could look at it as half. Um, but if we do it this way, I think it's a little bit simpler. So two water molecules will, um, all of these hydrogens are gonna become protons. And so these protons are going to be inside the thylakoid membrane so this is another reason that we're going to end up with a lot of H pluses in here is, for example, the water just gets converted basically to an H plus, actually four of, well, two waters, and you get four H plus. So that's going to accumulate those inside the thylakoid lumen. And then um, it also um, produces these electrons, which can get passed to P680. Um, and so uh, we form these oxygen molecules, which is effectively a waste product. Water becomes oxygen. So, you know, you have to water your plants. And as you water your plants, they use that water to produce oxygen. But to the plant, the oxygen now is waste. And really what we needed from that water were these electrons so that we could replace the electron. And then these electrons are the ones that are going to be excited and then they're going to be transferred. But they're not excited yet. When they come from water, they're just normal, boring, low energy electrons. And then once we replace that electron at this P680, we can use chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is going to get excited by the light again, um, but it's going to keep passing that energy. Remember, if that electron gets excited, it normally would release that energy as heat, but we're not releasing it as heat. We're instead transferring it to P680 and letting its electron become excited. Okay, so P680 regains its electron from water, but where does this high energy electron go? The high energy electron from P680 gets past a to sequentially more electronegative molecules. So it gets passed to pheophyton and then some plastoquinones, QA and QB, and um, eventually QB is mobile. So QB, one of these plastoquinone, it accepts the high energy electrons um, and then it diffuses away. Um, so it starts moving along this um, the thylakoid membrane, diffusing away from photosystem two. And as it um, gets transported away, as QB gets moving, it's going to transfer that electron to another molecule, the cytochrome complex, which actually uses it to pump hydrogen into the thylakoid lumen. So hydrogen into the thylakoid lumen. And eventually, um, and then it gets passed to this other guy, little PC. And then eventually that electron makes it to photosystem one. Photosystem one is going to also have all of these chlorophyll molecules, um, and they're going to be harvesting um, energy from the light that's hitting it because they're pigment molecules, so they absorb all of the light energy except green uh, wavelengths, but they absorb all that light energy and then they pass it. So as they um, absorb it, that electron gets boosted, but then it releases the energy, but it doesn't go off as heat. No, 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 it gets passed to P700, and it is used to excite P700's electron to this higher energy state, and so it loses, so that electron once again gets re-excited and gets passed on to another primary electron acceptor, and then it gets passed down this chain again until eventually it's going to make it to NAD+, 
where NAD plus can gain the electron and be reduced to make this energy intermediate NADPH. This is called the Z scheme because first we excite the electron and then we pass it, pass it, pass it, pass it, and then we excite it again and we pass it, pass it, pass it, pass it. So we're able to use all of this energy. We're not losing very much of the energy at all as heat. We're always using that energy from the electron to do things like pump hydrogen into the cell and then eventually to reduce uh, this molecule with that electron. Okay, and so here we're going to look at that whole process all summed up. So oxygen, where is oxygen produced? Oxygen is produced inside the thylakoid lumen as water um, gives up its electron to replace that electron that got passed. Water gives up its low energy electron back to P680. Um, and in the process of giving up the electrons, water loses the electrons and is oxidized and becomes oxygen. In the process, um, it breaks off those two hydrogen protons, only the protons, because remember those electrons are going to P680 to replace it. So we're left, um, these hydrogen atoms are left with only their proton and they're left in the thylakoid lumen. The electron from those hydrogen atoms uh, gets passed down this electron. Well, first it gets passed to P680 where it can then get excited again. Um, because of all the light harvesting chlorophyll molecules that uh, pick up that light energy and transfer it to the electron in P680. Eventually that electron pops off and goes down this electron transport chain. Um, as it gets passed, um, some of that energy is used to pump more H plus into the thylakoid lumen. It continues to get passed. Here it's going to get re-excited because here's more chlorophyll molecules that are observing that energy and will pass it again to that electron so the electron gets excited again and then it gets passed eventually um, to reduce an NADH or I'm sorry an NAD plus molecule to the reduced form so this is now our energy intermediate um, and then so other things that we have done in this process um, so we have accumulated H plus in the thylakoid lumen. And so this H plus that's accumulated here um, will be used um, by ATP synthase, which sits in this membrane. It's that, that um, water wheel as H plus can only move through ATP synthase. Um, H plus is used to turn ATP synthase to actually create this energy that rotates the molecule, which causes ADP to be smashed into a phosphate. And as it turns, that becomes ATP. And so we're actually making ATP and we're making this energy intermediate um, in this process. So those two are our energy intermediates and those are gonna be used in the next phase. So for photosynthesis, there's two stages. We've looked at the first stage, at least kind of rudimentary. We've kind of seen the idea of it. So there's the photo stage where we basically chlorophyll is going to be used to harvest that light energy. And from it, through those processes we just talked about, produce these energy intermediates, ATP and NAD, technically NADPH. And then oxygen is produced. This is just waste. Uh, the, the photosynthetic organisms really don't need the oxygen anymore. It's now just waste. And then in the second stage, we're going to use these things that we just made in order to make uh, glucose. And so that's what we will look at in the next video.